what do you do with those eyes? You have ears, what do you do with them? And you have a mouth. You speak or you do you? Who, who said speak? You were a trouble student, weren't you? <laughs> I was hoping for taste. You threw me off. Don't ever throw the professor off his notes. But you're, the thing I want to go through, those five senses. Now, a lot of you either see a color you like, you smell a food you like, you taste a food you like. That is just the entrance to what happens inside your brain. Now, those, set, those areas that, about that thing that makes you feel or think about the way you see things and, and, and get goosebumps and your eyes open up, there's actually a chemical in the brain that I want to talk about today. And that chemical is called dopamine. Dopamine. Now, I want to give you a simple way to remember dopamine. How is dopamine spelt? If you don't know, it's up there. <laughs> D-O-P-A-M-I-N-E. If you separate the word dopa a mine. So I call dopamine my dope. We all are dope heads in a special kind of way. You have this chemical in your brain that is involved in your favorites, the things that you really love. And ultimately, that chemical makes you feel good. Now, I didn't in invent this word, but dopamine is one of the chemicals we're going to concentrate on today, and you'll see why once we get a little bit deeper into it. Dopamine answers that question, why is it that you like green and it makes you feel good? And you kind of like green, but it doesn't make you feel as good as her. Because with you, for whatever reason, green is your dopamine. What, somebody said they had a favorite food. What was it? Broccoli is your dopamine. Okay, that's a little unusual. But <laughs> yes, we will. And who said they were in love with somebody? No, no hands went up. Okay. Um, we're going to record the audience and notate those of you who didn't respond. And somebody's going to be in trouble tonight. <laughs> Let me go back to the PowerPoint. So, dopamine, euphoria, you feel good. So, with that substance in your brain, I want to talk about two uh, substances that can elevate your level of dopamine. Now, think about it. When your dopamine is elevated, you feel good. There's two things in the environment I want to show you that elevate dopamine. One is called caffeine, and the other one is called fructose. Everybody remember those names? What's the first one called? The second one is called? Okay, keep those in mind because there is going to be a quiz after this uh, presentation. Where is na fructose naturally found? In fruits and vegetables, right? So everybody see the picture. What is the chemical call that makes you feel good in the brain if it's elevated? Dopamine, right? And it's called my dope. One of the one of the chemicals that can, or substances found that can elevate dopamine is called fructose. And where is fructose found? Fruits and vegetables. So, ladies and gentlemen, the fruits and vegetables, your body and brain actually has a natural addiction to make you feel good when you eat fruits and vegetables. Now, is something wrong about that? Could you think about how healthy we would be if we couldn't get enough of our fruits and veggies? Could you imagine people breaking into a supermarket and we're interviewing them? Harry, what happened? Well, you know, I just had to get me my carrots. I've been a carrot addict for years. Well, instead of going to jail next time, you can go in your backyard and plant the grow some carrots. 
Folks, I want you to see that when the children of Israel, remember when they crossed into the promised land and they saw grapes the size of watermelon, God was trying to tell them, hey, we're going to have a party. I'm in Vegas, right? So I can sing. Sorry, you sad ventus that saw me dance. You know, I, I, I used to go clubbing. <laughs> Still got a couple of moves. But God wanted them to feel good. That's why he said, hey, I'm going to take you to a land filled with milk and honey. Honey is another thing that contains natural fructose in it. And guess what? It should make you feel good. What I'm trying to say, folks, is that if we have our natural affiliation to fruits and vegetables, a lot of clinics and hospitals would be closed right now. But it's a natural thing that God gave us. But I also said that there's another one called caffeine. Most people think caffeine just wakes you up. But caffeine not only makes you feel good, but you could wake up looking like this. And you get your mocha or coca. I don't know what the, you know, Starbucks, it used to be coffee. Now it's a mocha. I, I don't know what all they are. But caffeine can take you from looking like this. Anybody know him, by the way? Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> to looking like this. Because you feel good. Fructose and caffeine. But where is caffeine naturally, here we go, and unnaturally found? It is found from this thing called a cocoa bean. But, folks, I want you to show you something about beans versus leaves. Caffeine is naturally found in this cocoa bean. And here are some of the products. I'm going to skip this slide. That children are mostly using today to get caffeine. But can you see why? That not to make them necessarily feel awake, but to help them feel good, right? So the child or the adult could eat fruits and vegetables and feel, or caffeine and feel. So on the mor Monday morning traffic, when everybody's trying to get in line at that favorite place owned by a buck who is a star, what are they getting in line for? Not coffee, because I'm on my way to the 9 to 5 and it's not payday. I need something to get me through this paid slavery. So I got to get me some so I can do my work and get through the day. That's what caffeine does. But quick, quick thing that we need to understand, and this is one thing that the devil figured out. People often, often ask the question, what is the difference between cocoa, cocoa, etc.? It's not necessarily the bean. It's the leaf. Anytime you deal with coca, cocoa, or the plant, the leaf is what determines what type of stimulant you produce, whether it's caffeine or whether it's cocaine. So that is the real big difference. People argue over about the bean. But the bottom line is all of these stimulants are designed not just to give you energy, but to help you feel. Just think of James in honor of James. Okay, I feel good. All right, so, but not only do you have in your brain a natural addiction to caffeine or fruct fructose, you know, I mean, natural addiction to fruit, I'm sorry, you can develop an artificial uh, addiction to caffeine, but also food can cause your brain to feel, for you to feel, and one of the ways food can fool you is by the way it looks. Does a lot of that look good up there? Yeah, right? Anybody ready to go to buffet? I'm paying. Wait, wait. Y some of y'all heard I'm paying. You said okay. I said anybody. You see, I know how our folks are. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Th that looks real good, right? Looks, you know, get your taste buds flowing, right? All of the food that you see up there are foods that God said don't eat. <laughs> I think I got your attention now. 
What I'm trying to show you is that your brain, your senses are so in tune to feeling good that if it looks good, probably isn't that bad. But this is another thing designed to trick the brain. Don't worry, we're, we're gonna, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Now I want to get to the big point. I want everybody to look up here. What does dopamine do to you when it's released? It makes you good. Now we're going to look at, and what was, what, what was the natural substance that, what is it called? Fructose. What is the manufactured substance called that could make you feel good and we find it at Starbucks? Caffeine. And what is something that is found at every buffet that we could look at, smell, and taste and make us feel good? It's called? Food. All right, so let's look at everything of, or that we know of, and I'm going to throw in something else later, that can cause your dopamine to release, which means that you're going to feel good. So the red line is food. The green line is sex. The yellow line is alcohol. The mauve line is nicotine. The bluish line is more, if you follow from left to right, you can see what the lines represent. So I want you to look at when you consume these substances at one hour of time, where everybody starts. What's the dopamine level? It's the same, right? For everybody. But look at what happens after two hours. The dopamine level from food wears off. The dopamine level from sex wears off. The dopamine level from nicotine wears off. But the dopamine level from cocaine and morphine are the highest. So, the person that is using cocaine and morphine two hours later feels good. The person that ate food two hours later wants to sleep. So now you see why people that are addicted have food, have alcohol, have a cigarette, can have some sex, and then throw in drugs. The newest craze called chemical sex. That's going on right now. Why? Because people are finding ways to spike their dopamine. Does that make sense? Now, we bring a new player into the picture. Those bars represent how high your dopamine levels are. Because when dopamine is elevated, we feel... You can see great food, sex, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines, and the pharmaceuticals introduce opioid meds. Look at where they stand in how high, in terms of a level, they stimulate your dopamine. The thing that amazed me about the opioid crisis is this. You had all these intelligent MDs, you know, people with degrees and licenses. Did one of them say, hey, I think this might be a bad idea, trying to control people's pain by overstimulating their dopamine? Well, through a mu receptor... So we're going to control pain by making you high. That's what junkies have been doing all along since Fred Flintstone days. Y'all remember Barney? He was the one that was high. Fred was all, you know, hey, Wilma. But Barney was the one. Watch. Go back and look at the cartoons. But what I'm trying to say is, folks, how did this slip on? The, this is why I'm telling you, you need to understand basic physiology for yourself because it's going to get real deep, really fast to understand where I'm going with this. But I want you to see that man invented an opioid that is very close to heroin, heroin and met, uh, methamphetamine because people are looking for a way to get dopamine. Let me say something about drug addicts. They're souls. They're people. Um, the saddest thing is that we forget these were people that were made in the image of God. And sometimes what they have gone through in life, and this is where the church has a place. I don't know about you, but I feel good when I come to church. 
I feel good when I come to church, when I listen to the message, when I hear the music play. One of my favorite parts of church is where the musicians forget where they are and they just go off. When the praise team, you know, you know what, you can tell. The Holy Ghost is always present. But you know when you got that praise team and you got those one or two people looking at their clock and the praise team just said, no, I'm sorry, child. You better stop looking at your clock. I'm feel, you know, I know, I know we don't like to hear this. I'm feeling like I'm in the spirit and they just go on and on and on. Guess what? I feel just as good. The people in the streets or the people that are addicted, they're looking for some other way to feel good. And that was part of what the church had to do. So opioid meds was a way for the pharmaceuticals to fill in a gap that the church never filled. Jesus Christ, in, the, in as much as you've done this unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Remember when he separated the sheep versus goat? You know what the difference is between sheep and goat is? I, I'm not even making this up. Sheep don't eat weed. Goats do. <laughs> um, try it out. Any of you have any sheep or goats? Grow a little weed in your backyard and let them loose. The sheep won't touch that stuff. The goats will. Okay, try that experiment. If you get arrested, don't say you heard it here. <laughs> All right, let me go back to the PowerPoint. So, the, folks, this is going to make sense. Let me, uh, PowerPoint? It's, uh, okay, there we go. All right, so. When we look at addiction rates where they are today amongst adults, tobacco is still the biggest thing adults are addicted to. Look at where cannabis is or weed. It's down at 9%. But when we look at children, this is 1999. Look at age 12 to 14. The blue bar represents marijuana. This was, this was, in comparison to all the drugs children use, marijuana was the highest. This was in 1999. Do you see that? Guess what chemical in the brain marijuana elevates? Take a wild guess. Dopamine, to help the kids feel good. All right? Now, in 2014, look at the top of the chart between 8th graders and 12th graders, a fourth year span, 11% were using marijuana, and it jumps to 35% when they get to 12th grade. Because what are they looking for? What type of reaction in the brain? Dopamine, feeling good. All right, you got it? So you notice a difference between adults versus children? Let's find out why. You're going to see. Here's the thing that we need to keep in mind, too. Aren't kids today different? They try to act like adults before they have a job, um, any responsibility. Some of them, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I was told any adult you respect. You just don't respect your own parents. You could not talk back to an older person. Even if they were wrong, if an older person stepped on your shoes, you didn't cuss them out and want to swing on them, you had utmost respect. But something is changing about their brains. Now, here's what I want you to catch. Anybody heard about this term called schizophrenia? Schizophrenics hear things. They see things. Follow where one of the basis of schizophrenia comes from. Dopamine, and this is why God designed us perfectly. Dopamine at normal levels does not cause symptoms of schizophrenia, but when those levels are consistently high, that is one of the uh, um, factors that causes schizophrenia. So here's the thing. If your dopamine is elevated by natural levels, natural foods, natural things, or even some artificial you can feel good. But when it's too high, you develop schizophrenia. Anyone ever heard of tweaking? You know, the kids that tweak or people that tweak and you say they're on drugs? 
When dopamine drops too low, here's what happens. When you spike the dopamine too high using drugs, you start burning up your natural dopamine and it starts to drop real low. And when that dopamine drops real low, that's what we call Parkinson's disease. Where you sit and you shake. So you have two things going on. Using too much, getting too much of dopamine, schizophrenia. Too many years of use, that dopamine level wears off, Parkinson's disease as an early age, what we call tweaking. But folks, remember, God designed it so the fruits and vegetables would make us feel good. How did we get to this complicated scheme where... Something happens to a child's brain to lead it to the brains of a lot of adults that we see today. Let me give you some stats. The biggest growth of illness in the mental field right now, explosive growth, they try to blame it on COVID, but here's the thing. Any of you ever boil water under a covered pot? Right? At... The thing is, if that thing is boiling, you don't see the steam. But the minute you let it go, I don't know if any of you ever use a pressure cooker. You know, if you don't, if you don't have that valve released on the pressure cooker, when you finally let the lid off, boom, what was cooking underneath explodes. This has been going on and on and on for years. When COVID happened, it just exposed it because now people were in close proximity to observe in a comfortable environment which could be home or possibly a station where all people were working and mental illness has exploded in the medical field about 35 to 40 percent that means three out of every 10 people trying to access the healthcare system right now it's for a mental illness but what happened why did this happen how were our brains set up to look for feeling good from an unnatural sources. Let me expose the devil's plan and what he did. So the first thing is, let's start with a baby. The first question you have to ask yourself, how did it start, was, are babies more bottle-fed or breastfed these days? Breast milk does not have anything within it to bruise dopamine spiking in the brain. But if you look at formula, and a lot of pediatricians are not going to like what I'm about to say, but it's the truth, and I'm going to say it anyhow. If you, look at for, oh, for, if you look at formula, there's an ingredient right at the top of the formula that makes up 43% of that formula what is that ingredient? Corn syrup. Does anybody know what corn syrup is? But it's not just sugar. It's a high, here it is, it's a highly concentrated form of fructose. What does fructose make happen to you? Feel good. If we concentrate it a little bit more, you feel even better. So what the baby gets, instead of mama's milk, instead of mama's attachment, he gets his first dose of his or her cocaine. And by the way, you, you, people crack me up when they read labels. You just need to know a couple of ingredients. I can guarantee you, most of the foods people have a problem Stepping away from when they're trying to diet, guess what ingredient they have in them? Corn syrup. All it is is concentrated fructose. Concentrated fructose elevates your dopamine. Dopamine makes you feel good. So you feel good by eating corn syrup. 42%. What's that? Yeah, but the main thing is this corn syrup. That's the one that gets the baby hooked. And by the way, this is the, this is the, this is the healthier, here it is, here it is, 
This is the healthier, gluten-free formula. So they got you giving your baby stuff. You know, child, I'm not going to use the breast. God gave me to feed my baby. Because my baby's formula is gluten-free. And it has corn syrup. So the baby's first birthday party, what now? I'm not being mean. Y'all know how you are, Chuck E. Cheese. You give that baby a nice big birthday cake. He's, and guess what you're giving him? A nice high dose of corn syrup. Then when you get your first shot, what do you tell your baby? Come on, Johnny. Be a good boy. You can tolerate it. You're a man. Because if you tolerate that shot, once the shot is over, I'm going to give you a lollipop. What is the lollipop? Corn syrup. So after Johnny gets the shot, Johnny gets the lollipop, and he gets a nice big dose of corn syrup. Dopamine. There you go. He's catching it. That man is smart. You may call it a lollipop. Now, folks, I'm not saying these things are bad, but I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this to show you where, what happens. And so what happens is by the time a child hits the ages that we looked at, 12 to 14, their brain is already set up for an addiction. All you have to do is throw some poverty in there. Throw some school lunches in there. Throw that, hey, my grandmother got shot mowed down in there. Oh, I'm being bullied at school in there. Throw in something that makes the child feel bad, and they now look for a source, which has become marijuana in these days, to feel good. There is not so much peer pressure involved. It's counseling. You know, I'm going through the same thing in my house. What do they want to do? They want to send me away to grandma. Or they want to send me to a doctor. Well, you know, when I smoke this, I feel in high. So I can even speak Jamaican. This is what the kids say to each other. I have, you know what? I, am, I want you to try this and tell me how you feel. Because it's all about dopamine. So let's go through. So, folks, by the time a, ch a breastfed, ch a, a bottle-fed child is at 12 to 14 years of age, they have established within themselves a pattern setting them up for addiction. And I'm going to show you what's going on with adults. Don't worry, we're almost done. So let's start off with dopamine levels and caffeine. Remember what does caffeine do? It elevates dopamine. It gives you a stimulant effect. It makes you feel good. The first thing you need to understand, you good intended church people, never tell anybody quit anything cold turkey. The rebound effect is worse than your personal satisfaction. Anytime you're dealing with addiction, Slow and long is better than quick, and I feel like I've done something. The worst thing that you can do is say you can stop tomorrow. You have the willpower. You're not a Marine sergeant. Stop trying to scare people to quit. Get a professional. If you don't, this must be done over time. Never tell anybody to quit anything. Even cocaine, just like that. There has to be a process. It has to be by a guided professional. Because when you're just telling anybody to quit cold turkey, you're giving them too much of a dopamine drop off in the brain. Now, you're going to be able to figure out what happens. So I'm using cocaine. I'm feeling good. And you're telling me you need to quit. You need, and I do need to quit. Well, what I'm going to do is take all your stash. So that Tuesday, you don't have any more. So I went from feeling good to feeling really bad. Into, that's the crash. 
And what do people do when they crash? You know what? I never tried prostitution, but I heard you could make quick money that way. They will look for something to try. You know, I never knocked off a person in my life, but I'm just going to hold the gun to scare them so I could get my stash. Actually, what's pushing, then what happens is when they feel the crash, they want to rapidly get back up to where they were. So they do more. The first thing is, folks, there is a way to help people, but you got to be invested in the long haul. And I'm, I'm saying this, you know, as a church, I want you to understand, if you have someone who's addicted, if you have someone you want to help, this goes for any addiction, even if it's a close person to you, stop the cold turkey talk. Stop the you don't have willpower. This is something that you have, to, and Jesus, have to be in it over time because you don't want anybody to crash. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he didn't find her a lawyer and said, now you got to do five divorces. Did he? No. He just said, go and sin no more. Figure it out. You knew how to get the five. Then get rid of the five, <laughs> you know. She probably said, well, you know, Nick pays rent. Tommy pays the water bill. I could live without water because I could get it from, and John pays the cable. No, let me get rid of John because cable I don't need. That's probably what she did. Jesus didn't say, you know, go find it via lawyer and let's get you divorced today. All I'm trying to say, folks, is time. Give yourself time. But also, Doc has some solutions for you. You can replace these two cups if you are struggling with coffee. Remember now, it, 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 it's the stimulant effect. The, there is actually, we're going to go back to nature. Green tea and orange juice, a combination of those two, gives you a little bit of the caffeine. And here's the difference. A eight ounce glass of coffee gives you about, it can be anywhere from 80 to 320 milligrams of caffeine. But an eight ounce glass of green tea gives you about five milligrams to 15. So it's a little bit of coffee, enough not to go through a, tr a crash. And the orange juice helps to fuel your ATP. So what you're doing is you're looking for a replacement to stop your dopamine from crashing. Um, the reason why also this is important, you see that nice big red graph on top? That's obesity amongst our children. Remember the age group, right? 12 to 14 compared to other countries. And the reason why these kids are becoming obese and becoming obese adults is that lack of dopamine. I'm going to get into that real quick in, in, you know, in a minute, like some things that the church could do. And some of this had to do with Happy Meal. Y'all ever heard of Happy Meal? Why do they call it a Happy Meal? They're telling you where to get your dopamine. And the child is saying, I want a Happy Meal. I want a Happy Meal. How many of you... Uh, have ever seen, not you personally, but other people punish their kids by saying, if you're nice, I'm going to give you a treat. I'm going to give you all this strawberry that I have in my hand. What do they say? If you're nice, I'm going to take you to the golden arches and get you a happy meal. And the kid is happy. Next time you look at a kid's menu, anywhere, has the word happy in it. Because they're trying to do dopamine, okay? But so here's the other thing, and I was telling Pastor about this. For those of you who like veggie stuff, folks, veggie, no, no, I'm, once again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just trying to educate you. Veggie means vegetables. Can everybody say veggie means vegetables? When I say veggie meat, that is an oxymoron. Look at the Adventists. Y'all don't want to respond. Did anybody just have a heart attack, MI, stroke? <laughs> Veggie meat. Here's what happens. Then why Adventists are not as healthy as we should be? Because we don't eat meat. We don't eat pork. We don't eat turkey or chicken. And that shrimp stuff is nasty. 
But boy, you let me loose on some veggie meat. It's not just sodium. Look at this. This is an app I invented to tell you the glycemic index of what glycemic index is, it, calories, and also weight gain. So if you have, if you're consuming a food that has three to four stars, that means that that food consumed over time is increasing your weight and increasing your risk of disease. So, and I didn't make this up. If you look at the filet of fish burger, the hamburger, the lean beef burger, the McChicken, and here it is, drum roll please, veggie burger. Look at the quality of the food. I'm not trying to scare you. What I'm trying to do is educate you. Veggie meat is an oxymoron. You're still doing the same damage if you feel that you don't need to eat meat as if you were eating the meat. Man, it got quiet. Did a couple of people leave? Am I having a visual hallucination right now? I'm just trying to educate you. So, folks, my point is this. My point is this. With food, with food, you know, I have an app that I can get you for free. I'll tell you how to, you can do that later uh, if you want it on your phone. And that will help you with the uh, food aspect of it. But here's another thing that has come out with adults. That was the kids, you know, obesity and the Happy Meals, and they're getting the dopamine. Um, and there are ways to get them better diets by getting food substitutes. Look what's happening with adults that have found bariatric surgery. And you hear the angelic music. And the lies. You know, Doc, I, I cut out all the breads. And I cut out all the pastas. I don't even drink soda anymore. And I just can't budge from where I'm at. And I'm like, how many ways can you spell lie? <laughs> Mentira. Mentiroso. Go back to the PowerPoint. Did I do something? Here's what I want you to catch. 60,000 people were compared. Those that, 60,000 of a group that obese people, another 60,000 of obese people, 120,000 people. They found that those that did the gastric bypass surgery, get this now, 18% that did the surgery one year before the surgery were showing signs of a mental illness. The minute they did the surgery, one year later, 70% of them started showing signs of a mental illness. Most people that are doing bariatric surgery today have a dopamine disorder. Something is not right in their life, and they found food as a comfort. The reason why I'm bringing this up is here is an avenue that we as religious people can bring some good stuff that doesn't have to touch people's plates, but can touch their heart and their mind. Because the bariatric surgery is actually showing, revealing that these people have psychiatric disorders. Because you took away their drug, you took away their weight, but you took away their dopamine. And so the psychiatric disorder comes back. And then when I was doing a, I actually did a project at the Native American Clinic in San Diego, Native American Clinic, a six-year project. You know what I found? That most people had three of those surgeries because the natives, they, you know, a lot is paid for so they can afford to have this done. A lot of people did those three times and they gained back. 20 to 30 pounds more than they had lost when they did the surgery. And here's why. Your brain still has those favorites programmed in. And little by little, you start to go back to your old habits. So with coffee, we have green tea and orange juice as a substitute that you could use. And, and can I say something that um, is the truth? 
you're not going to go to hell for drinking coffee. Find me the text. I didn't tell you. I'm not in, Look, look. I'm not in, I'm just saying, folks, stop having non-theological conundrums about stuff Jesus didn't deal with. I, I can't can make the... I'm not encouraging, but what I'm saying is God works with us all. Moses made it to heaven. We know that from the Mount of Transfiguration. Many of us will probably be surprised we're there. But stop this nonsense about thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, let's try to help people, not hurt them. So uh, green tea, orange juice for the coffee replacement. The app is something you can use for free, or you can look for food substitutes. These are things that taste the same but of better quality. And then the last one, I'm going to, that's the app right there. If you're interested in getting it for free, I'll, I'll give you some, I'll show you how. We can actually put it on your phones right now, um, you know, after the, the presentation. And the last thing is dopamine levels and our kids. And I'll go through this real quick because I appreciate you guys tolerating me for about 45 minutes. Um, you notice kids are playing a lot of video games? But not like the video games you and I used to play. How many of you remember Atari? Look, look, he's, he's like, I feel you. You know, with the tennis, with the two little boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And, and remember Pac-Man? And then Pac-Man had a daughter, but we never knew who, who his wife was, Miss Pac-Man. You know? Weren't those games fun? Eating dots, hitting a tennis ball. But look at the games that kids are playing now. They have to do with guns. They have to do with violence. They have to do with how many people they can kill. And they, you know, uh, they, the games are actually teaching them something that is not biblical. Not just violent, but it's telling them that you can die and live again. And come back to life with a better gun. <laughs> right? So here's, here's, the, here's what I, the point I want to make about our kids in this country, they, they need activity. You parents, if they're in Pathfinders, you need to support them. If there's afternoon programs for them, you need to support them. If there's a junior choir, you need to bring them and support them. Please stop expecting the church people to do your job as a parent. We need for you to support your kids in activities. The devil is, is convincing some of us that oh, all my kids need to do is get straight A's in school. And they're becoming horrible individuals. Be honest. No doctors are watching this YouTube live. How many of you, if you could actually get a nice doctor that would talk to you, know your name, look you in the eye, at least say hello, would dump the one you have right now? To, and I could go on and on. How many of you have taken an Uber ride? If the, if the Uber driver talks to me, not because, you know, I, I like people who are sanguine. Hey, where are you from? Da-da-da-da-da. I tip them. But the ones, where you going? And then, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, what's your name? Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave you a review. People have gotten nasty in service industries. It's because we've taken away arts from the school. We've taken away music from the school. These are things that develop our child's brain. Remember that chart I showed you about Europe? Bach, Beethoven. Those don't sound like American names, even in the hood. Yo, Beethoven, what up, my man? Yo, Bach, I'm just chilling. Just doing a hard gangster rap song. <laughs> no, my point I'm trying to make is, at least the Europeans to some extent. No, I'm not high on And by the way, don't forget Africa. Y'all should, if you have Instagram. I mentioned it. No, okay. There's, this, there's these uh, kids called ghetto kids from Africa. I just identified all of those. You have ghetto kids from Africa, um, Ugandan kids, really nice positive stuff. You, you know what? The Africans are doing better than us. They don't tell you that. Because you want to know what? They look like me. <laughs> Africans, Europeans, even the 
South, you know, certain aspects of industry, Central South America, are doing way better than our American kids. And why? Because we took out music. We took out debate team. Our parents don't support our kids for programs that the church runs. Our parents don't invent programs for our kids. You got to wait for the church for you to do it. Do it on your own. And so in review, as I close, you know, and bring up this last thing, the, the other tragedy is the schools are pushing more standardized testing. Everything is the test. You want to get a scholarship. You want to get into this career. It's a test, test, test. And they're taking away that natural dopamine. Testing does not elevate dopamine levels. Only for kids that are highly competitive and they cream the other kid. You know, they scored the top 10%. They get a, they get a rush. But drugs also give you a rush. So in conclusion, as we review, what is the chemical in the brain that we talked about today that makes you feel good? What is the natural substance found in fruits and vegetables that can elevate your dopamine levels? What is the other liquid substance that you can find in the morning, people lined up in Las Vegas, causing too much traffic to get before they go to work, that can also ra raise your dopamine levels? Okay, cough, caffeine, right, but you're getting to my next question. What is a substitute that you could try instead of caffeine, not because you're trying to gain salvation, but because you're concerned about your health and you want to preserve your temple? What is a substitute that you could try to coffee? All right, and should I quit tomorrow? Right, because if I quit tomorrow, what happens? Crash, and that crash represents... Dopamine dropping off in my brain. So I go from feeling really good to feeling really, and I want to get back to feeling good. So I, now I want to do riskier things. If dopamine levels are unnaturally too high in the brain, what is a mental illness that that can cause? Schizophrenia. And once I start using drugs, that start spiking my dopamine, spiking my dopamine, and then they drop down to levels that are not supportable. What is what Parkinson's disease? Or what we call twicking, tweaking, right, with the kids. Um, what is something that I could do for my children that is non-food related to help elevate their dopamine levels or something I could do for my church. Any ideas? Keep them active. Arts. Sports. Pathfinders. AY. Lecture by Dr. Ross at 4 o'clock. All right, you missed it this time, but next time you'll catch up. Folks, I think you learned. Y'all sound like pseudo-neurologists to me. You learned something about dopamine today. That's all my presentation. If you have any uh, questions, um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with those first. And then um, if any of you want to download the app for free and the, it's, it's a three, it's a three strategy program. It's an app that helps you with your food choices. It's a exercise program that tells you exactly the type and style of exercise you need to do um, to stay healthy. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it comes in a PowerPoint, you know, that you can. And then I also have a free ebook, which shows you all the research to show I'm not making this up. And it really does work. Look at me, I'm 56. No, no, I'm just, you know, when you got, when you got a younger wife, you better stay healthy. You better hit that gym. You know, all right. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> I used to, but then have you seen the vending machines come into the schools? No, seriously, that's what drove me out. So I used to, that, you know, the, the, school, the schools I used to go to, the food would spoil in the vending machines. 
the only because the parents learned it was better to pack the lunch for their kids, and they found they actually connected better when they talked with their kids, and so, yeah. But thank you for asking. Any, any other questions? No? Yeah, no? Okay. Oh, there we go. Well, okay, not necessarily. I see what you're saying, and that could be a factor. I, I have to be honest with you and say that is not fully re researched. Here's what happens when kids start hitting the terrible twos. They're learning how to express themselves. They're learning how to, um, a, a, but they're also trying to figure out the boundaries that you have set on them. So it's them learning more how to talk and, and learning how to express, I don't like that, I like this, etc. And then they'll push you. Because a kid at two is never thinking that you're going to pack his bags and they're going to be out on the street. So they're going to keep pushing your boundaries. And they're developing and they're, you know, so it's more. But you're right. The, one of the factors, two things we noticed since they started bottle, you know, feeding kids is they're more gassy and developing gastritis now. And also, um, yeah, more hyperactive. So, yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, let me, should I have a mic go around, Pastor? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I can't, I'm sorry, I, 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 I forgot we're on YouTube, so. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. So they gave me Similac and me not really knowing. So I, I started giving him Similac, and I noticed that he was being, he was constipated. I'm like, a baby is not supposed to be constipated. You know, so I stopped with the Similac, and I, uh, quite by accident, I found the soy-based uh, formula, uh, and I started giving him that, and the constipation went away. Uh, and I noticed that when I took him to the pediatrician, you know, for his regular uh, visit and whatnot, you know, um, she talked about him and said that, you know, he was too thin. He's too thin. He's too thin. You know, uh, you need to be giving him uh, s s Similac, you know, Similac, you know, and I just listened to her. But, I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going back to that, you know. So okay, but okay, be careful. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Even regular breast milk can mm -hmm. cause a kid to be constipated. The oh, soy yeah. is no better. Any sort of, put it this way, the only reason why, um, no, and there's, remember, these are not hard, fast, or I'm trying to, mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you what you could do for your child to be set up for a brain that is not susceptible to addiction. Um, the, the, the only reason, if a mother isn't producing enough breast milk, that's the best thing. But even though it says soy, it's processed. And it can, you know, it has some detriments to it, too. Well, that's true, yeah. too. But at least he wasn't constipated when he started drinking, when I gave him the soy. I'm serious. No, it no, I'm not. Up, what I'm saying is I found, I found, when, here's how you figure out if someone's really constipated. You ask the parent on two or three occasions or a person, the same question, and you'll notice they'll give you different answers. Sometimes it's subjective to what it, if a baby doesn't go for three days, that's totally normal. That's not constipation. When a baby has fever, a hard abdomen, and there is stool coming out, but it's small and like rocks, that's actually constipation in well, a baby. He, Anything less than that me. is. Was, that's what was happening. It okay. Was coming out. No, but did he have a fever? No, he didn't have He wasn't fever. constipated. Well, whatever. No, I'm, I'm just saying. That was, it, I, to I'm me, just that was abnormal. Understood. But I'm, what I'm saying is be careful with soy because they, like Coca-Cola Zero, it's the same marketing lie. You know, they, 
be careful with organic, be careful with gluten-free, be careful, you know, with soy, be careful with, uh, what's the other one, I, I, uh, plant-based. So just be careful. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 Pastor, uh, I was, my, when, when I was, was an infant, I was allergic to my mom's milk. I was allergic to anything, and the only thing that they found to give me was soy. And I mean that 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 mm -hmm. that's that's that, I know I'm strange, bro. That's probably what it is. No, I wouldn't say you're strange. <laughs> I mean, you got to be careful how there's grades of allergies. You know, yeah. there's mild or mild. It could have been something else. It could have been baby softener. It's highly unusual because actually, if you look up uh, incidence of allergies to mother's milk. Unless the child has a GI congenital abnormality, that would be a first. Yeah, um, yeah mother's milk does not produce allergies. Mm. Now, the reason why cow's milk started producing allergies is because most people don't know that lactating cows are, are producing milk when they don't have a calf. So they naturally put a penicillinoid in the cow's milk to you know, prevent an infection. You're giving the baby that cow's milk with the, even, you know, even though they say if you notice on the formula there, it does have cow's milk in it. It's a dried form. And that's how the baby develops a penicillin allergy. Mm -hmm. But mother's milk doesn't have any of that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, let's uh, get the mic and then. Okay. My question is, you mm -hmm. mentioned plant-based and the other stuff as um, giving you that high. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that high, but... Um, I said be careful with be careful, advertising. Right. Yeah. So what about um, keto stuff? How does keto? That? Yeah. It's oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. Here, here's, here's the thing. If you don't... This is why I say go back to basic physiology. Keto is a starvation fuel. When your body doesn't have enough energy, it's, it, go, it starts using these fuels as starvation. So in other words, what the keto diet, keto you know, uh, type of thing does is tries to fool your body that it's starving so it burns extra calories. That is not a good thing to do long term because one of the organs that gets fooled is the kidney. And that kidney can be exposed to a point where, I'm, and now remember, if anybody's on YouTube watching and they're an internist, I'm put, one, I keep saying, I go back to basic physiology. Don't tell me, well, email me, well, in this study. No, no, no. I'm going back to God for man. And this is how the kidney works. You know, um, you have to be careful with that. Anything invented that is veers away from natural physiology there is going to be a side effect and a detriment to it. Keto is not something that we were designed to do. I'm not, re remember, once again, you're not going to lose your crown. I'm going to see you in heaven. And we can talk about keto all we want up there. Because we're going to have new form bodies. So my bottom line is, why do people do some of the things they do? We have to be careful if we think it's for a possible cleansing religious reason when it's just more advertising trying to fool us. Uh, yes. What's what? No, nothing's wrong with it. It's just a lie. Um, so if you take a carrot, carrots are known for vitamin A. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. Um, every carrot, whether it's organic or not, has vitamin A. The chemicals that could be used to farm carrots that are possibly carcinogenic were already banned since 1972. I could be wrong in the year. So organic was just a marketing term to make people think that there was something better about organic car carrots. Here's my question. If it's better, why is it more expensive? <laughs> it's, n you know, it, you, you get the same amount of vitamin A. There's nothing bad about it. It's just that don't be fooled. Yeah. They were already banned. 
even in the regular carrots, pesticides are not there that are carcinogenic. Yeah, those are yeah, those are different. Those are um, those are you can actually see those carrots are abnormal, but they they could label those as organic too, because organic speaks more to the chemical cultivation of the process. You can still inject them with steroids because that's a natural compound. So that's where one has to be careful. No, and folks, remember, like I said, think about what we're discussing. It, none of this is going to affect your salvation. It's not even going to really affect your longevity that much. We're not going to go back to pre-flood living. I mean, the lady in Japan that died at 115, I think she was, she wasn't, look, I'm not being mean. She was kind of walking dead. She couldn't see. She could, I mean, you know, what I'm saying is, um, it comes a point where your quality of life, I'm not saying I want you dead, but I'm just saying that, okay, great, you lived to 115. But you couldn't go to Vegas. You couldn't walk the strip. You didn't even know what, I mean, you know, it's, so my, my question is, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish? You know, don't give your money away. Give it to the church. Not the, not the organic stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll take the question, and I'll get you next. Toenail fungus is not a side effect. What it is, it's an overgrowth because what diabetes does, it knocks down your immune system ability to fight off funguses, which live uh, on our bodies, in our skin, and they, they're opportunistic. So they look for an opportunity to overgrow. If your diabetes is controlled, you keep your feet dry at night uh, because some people like to sleep with socks at night, especially some diabetics who get those painful uh, feet, um, you should not have an issue with uh, toenail fungus. The treatment, because the thing people forget is the fungus is not actually 100% in the toenail. The roots are behind the cuticle. So if you cut the nail, the roots still exist and they'll keep coming back. Treatment has to be medical, which is usually pills because um, you, gotta, you have to kill the roots. Keep the diabetes controlled. Make sure your feet are dry at night before you go to bed and what they call debulking, which is sanding the toes down to a reasonable level about every two or three days, and that'll help control it. Okay. Uh, the young man over here. Yeah, so for patients who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, mm -hmm. how does the prescribed medication affect their dopamine levels, and are there any natural ways of treating it and regulating the dopamine level? Okay, now the second question, you will help me to answer. The first one, I'm going to answer. So here, remember, we said one of the factors that causes schizophrenia is your dopamine levels are too high. So guess how they try to treat it? They give you something that blocks the dopamine to help control it. Now, here is where it kind of can get interesting. This is a little, little bit not technical, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting. It's fascinating. There's in women who this is the way to try to control schizophrenia. They suffer from a side effect that is called Gal uh, Galacteria amenorrhea syndrome, which means that they start producing breast milk and they don't have a menstrual cycle because the dopamine has been blocked to try to get it down. Here's what happens in men, because we don't have breasts, right? None of y'all have a uterus, do you? As a man? Okay, so we don't expect that. But l let me show you why I say learning basic physiology is good. So as a man, you have schizophrenia, not you. So 
whoever his wife is, don't divorce him. I was making that up. You have schizophrenia. We're trying to bring your dopamine levels down. We give you a drug that's really potent, and it really brings your dopamine levels down. What's the side effect in a man? Possibly tweaking. What's that? <laughs> and actually, he's right. I mean, you know, I didn't expect that one, but he's right. That's one of them, but another one is depression. So you see, when you understand just the basic physiology, that is, you know, that is one of the things. So bringing the dopamine levels down. Now, the second thing is what could you do naturally? N remember, um, one of the things I said this morning is counseling, medication, it's the but the counseling is always better. So what could you do naturally? Number one, what's the first thing? I just mentioned it. No, I just meant. No, no, no. Counseling. So one of the things you could do naturally. See, and here's the, th here's the, here's the thing I'm trying to get. The, this is why I call my organization Teaching the World. Most, and you're not alone. Most people want to look to a pill for an answer. The first thing people want to look for when they can't sleep is not behavioral, not, not cognitive behavioral therapy, which is turning off your phone half an hour before you sleep, not watching certain news channels half an hour before you sleep, trying to stop the stimulation in your brain so it doesn't go into sleep. They want to know, does melatonin work? Should I take Benadryl? What about, you know, Ativan, etc.? Some people are at that level where they need that, but most people are not. So the, 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 the natural part of counseling is one. But then, think about it. You know, if a person is schizophrenic, dopamine levels are too high, and we want to bring them down a little bit. Now, that could be most people who are schizophrenic, you know, in that sense. The genetic basis is a small percentage. Right now, they're trying to say, that, or trying to figure out what percentage of these disorders are genetically based. It's a small percentage. It's still environmental. So dietary type of changes. It may not just be the drugs. It could be other substances that the person is doing. Too, too much fats, too much sweets. Do you notice that most schizophrenics, not all, but there's a good percentage of them that are overweight. They're not helping their problem because they're getting a lot of You see that? So I hope that answers the question. Counseling, proper diet helps every disorder. Okay. We're not big now. So you're saying that the counseling is one of the most important things, and that's one of the things that we as people lack because we don't like to have people talk to us or we don't allow ourselves to listen to people that are going through these things. But to talk to someone and let them share how they feel and what they're going through and be able to understand them along with the diet change mm -hmm. will help them more so than the medication. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Oh. Exactly. So, and, and let me, let me use, let me, let me sh show you the power of counseling because it's more than just talking. I want you guys to understand this. Let's say Pastor Madden decides, right? Let's say he decides to put all strobe lights in the church. And that when you guys come in to worship the Lord, it's all strobe lights. The, uh, the computer fell. So somebody see me upside down. No, we're not in Australia. The computer fell. All right, so let's say, let's say Pastor Madden puts strobe lights in the church. And it really bothers you. Right? Okay? You following what I'm saying? But you don't say anything. You come to church every Sabbath, strobe lights. You leave church. When are we going to either get a new pastor or get rid of these strobe You're talking to yourself. You go home. Child, Pastor Madden sure did preach. But he needs to take down those strobe lights. You're talking to your girlfriend on the phone. Man, I learned this from this, but man, those strobe lights have got to go. And this goes on Sabbath after Sabbath. You're not saying anything 
about the strobe lights. You're not doing anything about the strobe lights, but the strobe lights are doing stuff to you. So the reason why the counseling is important is we need to know what's bothering you. And so when we know, I'm not a counselor, but I understand the basics of psychotherapy. What's wrong? What ha and sometimes you don't even know. The mind is so powerful, there are things that could have happened to you in the crib. Not the crib, young people. You know, not, you know, with the homies in the crib and the homies in the house. Homies, homie, homie, homie. No, 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 not that crib. I'm talking whack, whack crib. Okay? So if, if, if those things don't get out, if you don't learn how to deal with it, then it becomes a bother. That's where the counseling comes in. And don't worry, he's not planning to put any strobe lights in the church. All right. <laughs> yeah, but it's on Zoom, and they need to hear you. You touched on something that is of grave concern to me. Okay. Schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. You said that it's not inherently, or uh, there is a low percentage. Genetic, yeah of it being passed on genetically? There's a percentage, but it's lower, yeah, than, than the other ways that you can get schizophrenia. How many generations? Oh, it could be for several generations. Okay. So the best thing is counseling. Yes. But here's the other thing, um, and, and I'm not even making this up. You, you notice people are on these dating apps? Yes. I actually studied one of these, I can't remember what it was called. And what I noticed is that um, birds of a feather do hook up and get together. So a lot of times um, part of the passing on is that people with mental illness, they tend to understand each other well and, and have children. Unfortunately. Well, I don't want to say, but you know, I'm saying. I, I follow what you're saying. So. <laughs> That's why I'm saying that, yeah, there is a genetic link, but there's also, for some reason, this sort of attraction to other people that have something going on. Yeah. Keep me straight on the thing. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All righty. So does anybody want the app and, uh, the, on their phone? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I have, let me tell you how this works. I give you a gift card. Let me tell you how this came about. You will not believe this, and I can share it now because it's been about uh, five or six years, and so I'm not under any sort of disclosure agreement. Um, when the pharmaceutical companies looked at the way this app worked, before they saw me, <laughs> they said, wow. You know, when people listen to my name and hear me on the phone, uh, they think I'm Archie Bunker. <laughs> when they see me in person and see I'm George Jefferson, they say, oh, you're not moving on up <laughs> to the skies. You better find some other place. <laughs> no, but um, here's what happened. So I got invited for, to, the, oh, this is brilliant. This is a great idea. We want to see how it works. It was kind of a setup. Um, so when they saw me, got rejected, rejected, rejected. Sent one of my buddies who <laughs> played the role, <laughs> and we got a lot of funding. This is what, exactly what the pharmaceutical said. Oh, my. If people use this and they follow it, we'll have less people who are diabetic and, therefore, less sales of our drugs. This was about five or six years ago. So... Here's some money. You can give this stuff away free. Um, so the way it works is if you have an Apple or Android phone, I'm going to give you a gift card. It's worth $10. What you do is I'm going to walk you through how to get to that site um, and then use the gift card, and you get the app for free. And also all of the access on the website, for, you get the diet plan, you get the exercise. This is all free. You'll never get any email for advertising, all that. That was my end of the deal. They, they thought it was strange because I'm not trying to get advertisers. I'm trying to do the part that God has me to do while I'm on this earth, and then I'm out and up, <laughs> okay? Um, the, uh, yeah, so 
Once you download it, you get $5 extra to spend however you want in the App Store or the Google Store, 5 or $6 extra. So each gift card is worth $10. So anybody want it, you let me know what phone you have. We can run through it real quick. Um, who, any, who wants it? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, so how many have Apple? Apple. So an Apple phone. Look, look, Pastor, you just shot yourself in the foot. You're not going to get the raise now because they know you can afford Apple products. Uh, uh, was it two apples? Three? Okay. Can I have somebody help me real quick? We'll do this real quick because I don't want to. Oh, this is Google. Let me do this real quick. I'm sorry, how many Apple was it again? Keep your hand up. One, two, six. You're going to need a coin. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, I have an Android coin. Okay, how many Android? Uh, raise your hand. One, two, three. Three Android? Three? Okay. Four? Three Android. Three? Four? Four? Okay. Um, they would, you know what? If they write me, I can get it to you. Which one do you have right now? If, okay. Here's what I'm going to do on uh, Facebook. Let me give you my. Oh, oh here? Or, oh, look up here. <laughs> okay. Um, to the people on Facebook, if you have a pen, get a pen. I'm going to give you my email address. And if you just send me where. You want me to send a gift card for the um, Android or Apple? I will, you know, I will mail the Android or Apple to you. I will pay for the stamp. Okay, don't worry about it. I got you covered. All right, I'll give you a couple of minutes to get a pen, and then those of you who have the Android or Apple, go ahead and scratch off the code from the back of the card. Yeah, you'll need a, um, a, p a penny. Yeah, I, uh, turn it uh, to the back. Yeah, your car key. Yeah. All right, while they're doing that, let me give you guys my email address. And remember, just send me an email. And just say I need a uh, gift card for the free app. And tell me your address. You don't have to put your name, but you could just send me your address. And here is the email address. It's C R O S is in Sam, S is in Sam, M D M P H 
at gmail.com. I'm going to repeat it again. C is in Charlie, R is in rabbit, O is in octopus, S is in Sam, S is in Sam, M is in Michael, D is in dog, M is in Michael, P is in Paul, H is in Harry at gmail.com. And once I get that email, I'll send it out to you. Remember, my standard. I think, are, are most of you, you have the code on your phone now? Or, I mean, or you have the code on your, on the uh, <clears throat> card. I'm going to, I'm going to get to that. Yeah. I want to make sure that you have the code first and then we'll go through how to, um, On the uh, faith. Um, yeah, because this is just going to be the download, and they probably will be bored with that. Yeah, we can. Okay. Pastor's going to uh, conclude, and then we'll come back, and then we'll download the uh, app for everyone. All right, everyone. We want to just thank uh, Dr. Ross uh, for uh, joining us uh, today once again. Uh, thank you for the gifts, and uh, for those of you that want to take advantage of this, uh, he gave you his uh, email. Uh, so we want to just uh, uh, close out here. Uh, this is our regular Bible uh, class time. Um, normally we have Bible class on Zoom, and so it's a closed session. So we have some Zoomers here, and we know that we went Facebook Live and uh, YouTube Live um, at this point. And so next week, if you want those listening on Facebook, if you want to join us, just jump on our website of Las Vegas at LasVegasAbundantLifeLV.org, and you have all the codes to get on and join us on our Zoom uh, Bible class. We will be continuing uh, the, um, the Tell the World uh, series uh, next week at 5 o'clock. And so we're going to close out here. We want to thank uh, Dr. Ross and his beloved wife joining us um, uh, from um, all the way from California. Let's put our hands together for them. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you Thank you so much. At this time, let's bow our heads uh, to close out. And uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, those within, you will continue uh, with the upload of your app. And those, uh, again, that uh, is interested in that, just reach out to Dr. Ross, and he will guide you uh, through email. All right? Let us bow our heads. Father God, we want to thank you so much for your grace uh, on behalf of the uh, Health Ministries Department, um, we just want to give uh, God the praise for uh, a, a well-spent day. We pray, Father, that you will continue to bless Dr. Ross and his ministry, he and his wife, as they uh, make ways for Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that you will surround them, that you will bless them. And one day, Lord, we will be able to talk about dopamine and all of these wonderful things on the sea of glass. Please, Lord, keep us, watch over us, and continue to guide us, Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We may not be talking about dopamine, but uh, how, how we overcame. Amen. want to praise God. Dr. Ross. Thanks, Pastor. I mean, um, I, I think we're going to just learn so much and be impressed. I'm already impressed by the little stuff we've learned on earth about God, you know. All righty, so does everyone have the code revealed on the card? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is on your phone, go 